big fan of HK firearms for 30 years. All the way from the P7 handgun or the HK91, 93, 94 MP5, USP handguns. I mean, there's just a lot of different products that really drive HK to where they are today. This is the HK P30. You can get it with the 15 and one with nine millimeter or 13 and one and 40. And so let's, before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look, make sure we're safe, there we are. This is a hammer fired pistol, which, you know, we're seeing more and more of the striker fires, especially in a polymer frame. But this is a reinforced glass polymer frame. It has a really ergonomic feel to it. And we're going to look a little bit more at the interchangeable back straps and side panels that can be replaced, which is really unique. The grip itself is really ergonomic, and of course that adds to accuracy, it adds to your confidence. The slide is a nitro carburized steel milled from one solid billet of steel. Very corrosion resistant. In fact, it's what they call the hostile environment finish on it. It is a nice matte finish. It actually says blued finish on the HK website, but it's really black with just a hint of blue. But the pistol itself is just a beautiful design. The slide is just extremely well engineered and very nicely executed. Cocking serrations on the front and the back, which are fairly aggressive. You have your HK P30 here, and then of course the caliber on this one is the nine millimeter. Now the pistol is fully ambidextrous, and you have your slide release here and on the other side, and then it has the magazine release, which is a paddle design, which that's really big with a lot of your German guns. Now, I'm really accustomed to using the magazine release here, but there's something about this little paddle release that I really like. You do have to adjust your grip just a little bit to get to it, but it is really solid, and of course, it's ambidextrous because it's on both sides. The only thing not ambidextrous on this pistol is your ejection port. It has a Picatinny accessory rail on the front, now, on some of the HK pistols, they have a proprietary rail only for HK products, but this one is Picatinny, so you can put any of your uh, M1913 accessories on here. It has a nice squared trigger guard, has serrations on the front, and it is large enough to accommodate gloved hands. Even with gloves, everything's accessible. Because of the way that these controls are, it's really easy to be able to manipulate and to get your finger in the trigger guard. The length of the barrel is 3.86 inches. It is a cold hammer forged barrel and it does have polygonal grooves, which really add to the length of the life of the barrel. Uh, and plus it adds to velocity because there's less drag as the bullet goes through. And so it's really gonna hold up well. One thing you don't wanna do is to use a lot of lead reloads in these barrels because it builds up in the polygonal grooves. It does have three dot sights, very low snag design. Uh, these are aluminous sights, they're not tritium. And one of the things that they purport is they don't use, uh, they're non-radioactive. So these are just painted on, but they do show up really well at the range and in low light conditions. In low light conditions, your sights are gonna show up well. Here's a little SIG uh, P290 with tritium sights and the illuminated sights actually stand out more than the tritium. Look at the sights on that. It's got that, they're illuminated. They're not tritium. Wow, they look good. Yeah. It does have three different sets of back straps and it has side panels, three different sets. And one of the things I specifically like is they're marked. Which one's large? These are medium, they're marked with an M right here, the large and obviously the smalls are too. And even the side panels, right and left, and it has the size right here marked. Of course, this is gonna make this almost like a custom pistol. You can fit it to however you want to. Three different back straps, three different side panels. That's a lot of combinations. Now to remove the back strap, make sure the gun is unloaded. Right here is a pin that pushes through. Just take your punch, pop it through. The back strap comes right off. The panels slide this way, so the back strap holds them into place and then they're easily changed. Replace the back strap, slides into place. Slide the pin back into place as well. This also gives you a lanyard point right here. With the pin out, you can put a lanyard strap in and then put the pin back in. The ergonomics on the grips are second to none, in my opinion. 
Uh, they do have finger grooves here, but they're very natural. A lot of times when I'm grabbing pistols that have finger grooves, I always feel that my hands don't fit right. And that's one of the things about this, because it's so soft and the way it's lined up, it just really fits very well in the hand. Um, you can see the texturing here. It's almost like a very small little stipple, and it's not aggressive, but you can feel the texturing. And it gives you a sure grip when firing the pistol. And in wet conditions, this would also aid. Uh, you do have it across the back, and then, of course, with the finger grooves, it's in each of the panels. Now, I typically like a very low bore axis on my pistol. And really, it gets up there far enough to where you can get a really good sight picture. And the recoil system itself, though, is what I think makes this pistol. HK has its own proprietary uh, recoil reducing system. And I'll tell you what, guys, it's just a soft shooting, flat shooting handgun. Now this is the LEM version, and one of the things that I love about this is it's double action only, but I'm going to show you a couple of things about the trigger pull. This is one of the things that once I got this pistol, I fell in love with. Typically, when you have a double action trigger pull, it's long and drawn, and that's no different from this pistol. It's hard. In fact, it's a really heavy trigger pull, and then you pull the hammer. But one of the things that's different about the HK is once you charge the pistol and you put a round in the chamber it sort of half cocks this system so you're always going to have a very consistent trigger pull it's always going to be the same and it's going to be really sweet watch this you have a long draw but then you have a really crisp little pull on your second shot again it's just a really smooth feel to it. Now reset. If you'll watch the hammer and the trigger, it resets the hammer. Comes out a little ways. The reset's a little bit long, but when you consider that you still have a lot of travel this way, it's still about uh, a third, I guess, forward. But checking the reset, Not too bad. You do have some trigger travel once you get past it. But I'll tell you, this it really, out on the range, this was a really fun gun to shoot. And the trigger pull itself, you don't even think about it. And really, it's so smooth, it's really excellent. But with the double action only standard models, with the decocker back here on the back and a spurred hammer, this is really a long trigger pull if you ever have to decock. And so that's one of the things about this pistol is you never have that really long, hard trigger pull for double action. It's pretty much every time single action. Or at least a single action feel to it. Now they do make the P30S, which has a standard safety here so you can carry it cocked and locked. And you know, if you do need to shoot double action, you are gonna have that long trigger pull. But if you're gonna carry it cocked and locked, you do away with that anyway. To me, the LEM version is the best of both worlds. And I would highly recommend before you buy any versions to take the three and lay them out together and try them side by side. I think that you're gonna find that you're gonna really like the LEM version over the others. But one of the main things about having a hammer fired pistol is your second strike capability. If you pull the trigger and it's a dud, you can re-pull the trigger and fire the round. That is the only time you're gonna be able to fire this pistol in that long double action mode with a round in the chamber. So, and then of course there's gonna be a problem. You're gonna be glad to have that round fire. And of course, because of that bobbed hammer, you don't have anything protruding out of the back of the pistol. Now, as far as durability with these pistols, they recently did a test. They shot 91,000 rounds through a P30 without any major malfunctions. And that's fantastic. The pistol weighs just a little over 26 ounces. Your Glock 19 weighs about 24 ounces. It's just a little over seven inches in length. The height is just a little under five and a half inches. The width of the slide from the farthest point is 1.37. And I think a lot of that has to do with the slide release. It does stick out some. One of the advantages that I noticed out at the range, without changing my shooting grip, I can hit the lever and charge the pistol. There is a loaded chamber indicator right here on the extractor. You can barely see the red, but it's really flush to the slide. We're going to take a dummy round. 
Here you can see where the red sticks out just a touch. That's not only visible, but it's also tactile. So you can feel this and know that the chamber is loaded. Now disassembly on the P30 is incredibly simple. You're going to want to get your slide with this notch right here at your slide release. So go ahead and pull your pistol back, push through on the other side. You don't pull it all the way out so it retains in the pistol and then let go of the slide and the slide will come right off. You also don't have to manipulate your trigger to pull the slide off which is an advantage. Here's a look at the interior. Here you have your recoil spring and guide rod. It also has a nylon bushing and this is part of their recoil reduction system. The barrel is a browning tilt barrel design with the polygonal grooves and again it is cold hammer forged which is an excellent process for barrels. The interior of the slide is extremely well finished. Uh, no tooling marks. Man this slide is just a work of art in itself. Reassembly just return your barrel. Make sure that your recoil spring the little hook fits in the bottom. It goes against your barrel. Return it to the slide. If you're not careful, make sure you keep the back of the slide down. And then you're going to want to get that notch again right here to your slide stop. And once you do, you can just push it into place. You're ready to go. And I also like the fact that there is no magazine disconnect safety. Now to give you a size comparison, here is the Glock 19 and of course the P30. And I'm going to show you the differences in as far as how these guns stack up. As far as length, with the barrel protruding, it's pretty much the same. The Glock 19 and the P30. As far as height of the pistols, the Glock wins out, the P30 just extends a little bit, but it's a, probably about a half inch. Now as far as width of the slide, the Glock is one inch, the P30 is 1.37 inches. A lot of that has to do with the slide releases. But really overall, very comparable to the Glock 19, which this is actually a Glock 23. Now down at the range, it was a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, very ergonomic, felt great in the hand. The recoil reduction system was really just very smooth and it showed up very well. Uh, just had a lot of fun. In fact, I carried quite a bit of ammunition down there, more than I thought I'd need. And I went through every bit of it. I just couldn't quit shooting it. So I really had a lot of fun with the P30. And I'll tell you guys, the one thing, the only downside about this pistol for many people is the price. And these typically run about the 970 range, 950 range. Uh, I have seen them for around the 850 range at certain places. Uh, but I'll tell you guys, one thing about a good quality pistol is you spend the money and it lasts a lifetime, two or three lifetimes. You pass it down. And really for the quality of this pistol, if you have the money, I think you're going to really enjoy the HKP30. I know I am. Of course, you can buy yourself two Glock 19s for the price of the H&K. And I have two Glock 19s and I still bought the H&K. I've always loved H&K firearms, especially the rifles, had a lot of experience. And then when the USP came out, uh, really loved that pistol, it, but it was pretty large. And really with more of concealed carry, I really wanted something smaller. And so when the P30 came out, I've been wanting one for a good while. But of course, the price is not cheap, but you get what you pay for. I'm going to tell you what, guys, you, once you try one of the P30s, you're going to be in trouble and your bank account is going to dwindle because this is an incredible pistol. HKP30, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
That's just cool. I love that. You don't have to nip. HK has their own proprietary recoil system that's HK has its own proprietary. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs>